Hello students, so welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to study about pleiotropy. Now, before I start with the pleiotropy, let us see about the Mendel first law of dominance, according to which for every character, there is one factor. Means according to the Mendel first law of dominance, characters are controlled by discrete unit called factor. So I'm just writing it this way, that for one character, According to the Mendel, there is one factor, which are now known as genes. This was according to the Mendel. Clear better? And now, in the post-Mendel era, what we observed is sometimes one factor controls many characters. They control many characters. And such case is known as pleiotropy. The pleiotropy is the case where one gene is controlling many characters. Is it clear? In our NCRT, it has been mentioned that there is one gene which is responsible for two characters, that is seed shape and amount of starch. The gene is one, but it is controlling two characters. Which two characters it is controlling? That is shape of the seed and amount of starch. Clear better? So when the gene is in homozygous condition, we have to see what will be the phenotype in case of homozygous as well as in heterozygous condition. Now see for example, if this gene is in homozygous dominant, we are finding that the shape is round shape. Okay, the shape of the seed is round. In heterozygous condition also, we are finding that the shape is round. It is only in the recessive homozygous we are finding wrinkled seed. Clear better? So with respect to the seed shape, we are finding like a mandel, it is a dominant and recessive relationship. But now see the another character, that is amount of starch. Amount of starch cream. We will find that when it is homozygous dominant, the amount of starch cream is maximum. Maximum starch cream. But in heterozygous, we are finding it is intermediate starch grain, neither too much, neither too less. It is intermediate starch grain. And in case of homozygous recessive, we are finding minimum starch grain. So this is the case where one gene, gene is one, but it is controlling two characters. Is it clear? Let me show you from NCRT so that your confidence can come. Now see beta, a single gene may produce more than one effect. Clear beta, this only I was trying to explain you. This is a case of pleiotropy. For example, starch synthesis in the pea seed is controlled by one gene. It is controlled by one gene and it is having two LL. Starch is synthesized effectively, means maximum starch grain formation will be with the homozygous condition. Okay, and as a result, seed shape will be round. Homozygous recessive will be less efficient in the starch synthesis, and as a result, your smaller grain will be produced and the seed shape is wrinkled. Clear better? So this seed will appear round and this seed will appear wrinkled. This much is clear. Now focus carefully. What with respect to the heterozygous? Heterozygous will produce round seed. Okay. But the starch grain which is produced by them is of intermediate size. Are you understanding it? Starch grain is intermediate size. So now if I see only starch grain character, 
If I see only starch grain character, then I will say this gene is incomplete dominance. Is it clear? If I consider only starch grain character, then from this angle, means from this direction, I will say this gene is incomplete dominant. So this gene is dominant with respect to the amount of the, sorry, with respect to the seed shape, but with respect to the amount of starch grain, same gene is appearing to be incomplete dominance. So now very important line. It means dominance is not an autonomous feature of a gene. It is not an autonomous feature of a gene. It all depends on the gene product, okay? What you have chosen to study. In which case, in the case when more than one phenotype is affected by one gene. So when pleiotropy you are studying, that time we will not say that this gene is dominant or this gene is recessive or it is incomplete dominance. We have to give this statement depending upon what phenotype product we have chosen to study. According to the seed shape, I will say this gene is dominant. With respect to seed shape, this gene is dominant. But with respect to amount of starch grain, same gene appearing as incomplete dominance. So better please, this is very important line of NCRT, learn properly. Okay, dominance is not an autonomous feature of a gene. It all depends on the gene product and the phenotype from this product. Okay, what you have chosen to study, what is your target to study? Are you studying seed shape or are you studying the amount of starch grain? So I think so this paragraph of your NCRT with respect to pleiotropy and with respect to Okay, dominance is not an autonomous feature of a gene. I think so this paragraph is clear to you. Okay, Vita, thanks for watching.